here. Can you believe it? One day to go. Are Chelsea about to make their first signing since their transfer ban was lifted? We'll tell you which Belgian international could be making a move to Stamford Bridge. This is Good Morning Transfers. Remember, there are plenty of ways to get involved. Manchester United fans, the wait is almost <laughs> over. An agreement is in place. Bruno Fernandes should be announced today. We'll bring you the latest. £85 million pounds for Richarlison. Should Everton snap Barcelona's hands off? Or are they right to say no? He's one of Tottenham's longest serving players, but it now looks like Danny Rose <laughs> is leaving London and returning to the North East. And the developments at Chelsea too. Will Willian be staying at the club come Friday night? Let's take it down too high. <laughs> and don't forget, you can, of course, download the latest episode of the Transfer Talk podcast. It's available on iTunes, Spreaker and the Sky Sports website. We are going to get to talking about Chelsea, but just to bring you the latest news from the Championship, in the last half an hour or so, Bristol City have agreed a deal worth just under £4 million to sign Naki Wells from Burnley. The striker will undergo a medical with the club this morning. So as soon as we have any more confirmation of that, we will bring that to you. But yeah, let's get to that very latest at Chelsea. They're in talks to sign Napoli forward Dries Mertens. Uh, Michael Bridge, tell us more about yeah, this. Yeah, we listened to Carve last night, telling us that last night on the transfer show, that the key is that Mertens is out of contract in the summer. Um, Inter Milan also want him, which is interesting because they've been so active this January. We understand it would cost around £5 million. Despite him nearly being out of contract, I think that's fantastic value. Now, Frank Lampard, we're told, is becoming quite frustrated by the lack of signings this month. Look, they can sign players. Everyone seems to forget that. Um, he's a big name. Very consistent for Napoli over the years and also so many Belgians have been successful in yeah, the Premier League. Haven't absolutely. They? We're going to talk uh, much more about him just in a couple of moments but just to bring you a couple uh, of lines just into us here on Good Morning Transfers. Uh, we understand the Sander Burge deal is really close. The player has actually arrived in Sheffield to finalise that move to Sheffield United. It's one we've been keeping an eye on uh, and now that deal is very close indeed so we will continue to keep an eye on. Uh, and elsewhere Sunderland and Barnsley are in talks to sign Luca. Connell on loan from Celtic. Uh, the midfielder is one of a number of options actually being looked at by Sunderland in the final few days of the window. So yeah, things bubbling away nicely with just one day to go. We are going to keep across all of that. Uh, we're also going to keep across this potential move uh, for Dries Mertens. And you said there what would cost at least £5 million. Pounds. I, I mean, he is out of contract, but £5 million, pounds, Anton, actually seems quite cheap. I I absolutely love this deal. I think I genuinely think this could be one of the one of the bargains of the window, regardless of the fact that he's out of contract. But look, he's a guy that can do everything. Dries Mertens was kind of almost like a forgotten winger. Always played second fiddle in the Belgian lineups, so the likes of Lukaku, and the likes of Azar, and the likes of De Bruyne. And then there was an injury to Milik a couple of seasons ago at, at Napoli, and he moved to play in the middle, moved to play centre forward. And he exploded. He scored 28 goals in Serie A one season, then followed up with 18, then followed up with 16. And like I said, this guy can do everything. He brings leadership. He can play anywhere across the front line. He can score tap-ins. He can score from outside the box. He brings big game experience, Champions League experience, World Cup experience. <laughs> this, you know, You're getting me excited. Yeah, this is what we need. This is the, we're getting to the thing, end of the window I, here, I always, guys. When I, when I think about Dries Mertens, I think about that 2016, 2017 season. He was shortlisted for the Ballon d'Or that year. And it was like every week you'd look at the results on a Saturday night and he'd scored another hat-trick. Right. week after week um, obviously 32 at the moment but he is a world-class player isn't he um, and he's just a few I think it's four goals short of becoming Napoli's record goal scorer as well so yeah. think about the players that played there I think about the likes of Higuain he's yeah, upstaged him this is genuinely you know he's a late bloomer in his career so the fact he's 32 doesn't necessarily that may make that much of a difference Come on, get excited, JD. Come on. Look, I'm excited from one, from one perspective because I feel like Frank Lampard is probably actively showing quite a disdain for the lack of sort of activity that Chelsea's yeah. done in this window. But at the same time, you said one thing there, which I can't quite go over 32 years old and coming to the Premier League. I, just naming many 32-year-olds, apart from Zlatan, who have come to the Premier League and actually made an, in, a direct impact at this point. When you were running through those accolades and those list of achievements, apart from the clubs, I thought you were describing Pedro, in fairness. 
So I'm just telling, man, I'm telling you, same age, similar sort of style of player, and Pedro can't get a game in that team at this moment. Nah, in time. He's got way more pedigree than Pedro because he's, he's look at look at way the more pedigree than Pedro. Yeah, definitely. As in, as in recently, talking about from an accolade. No, 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 I'm, talking, I'm talking about right now. As in, like what he's done the last couple of seasons. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's have a look at the impact that he's made because we can have a look at some of his stats. And I mean, I, I guess these do kind of speak for themselves. Now this is this is this season, and, and in fairness, this makes me look bad now. <laughs> um, because yeah, he he's it's not just his form that's fallen off a cliff at Napoli. The entire team. So that's true. Yeah, we've seen Ancelotti leave, Gennaro Gattuso come in. He's struggled. So obviously, look, he's only scored four goals this season, but Napoli haven't exactly been firing as well. They've got problems behind the scenes as well as what's going on on the pitch. But going back to what Michael and JD were saying about Frank Lampard being frustrated, you know, Chelsea have had more shots in the Premier League this season than Liverpool. They're second highest in the number of shots they've had this season. And yet. That's a good stat. They haven't, and yet, you yeah. know, they're not scoring goals. That's why he's desperate for a striker. I just think you have to look here as well. They've got Bashwai there, Giroud there currently as well. Mm. One goal between them in the league. I, I mean, at this moment right now, is Dries Martin going to come in and turn around and say, "Look, I'm going to hit the ground running, and look, I'm going to, I'm going to be a second, second sort of outlet in terms of goals this season." You can never guarantee it. Yeah, but Bashwai's teammate them. as well at Belgium. Uh, so yeah. what's Bashwai yeah. going to think? Just, yeah. If if if, Mar if, the, if this comes together, I, I would expect Bashwai to think, okay, "Shall I go out on loan for the rest of the season?" And also, it might have implications on Olivier Giroud move. Yeah, of yeah, course. Definitely. And when we talk constantly about the youngsters that, that Chelsea have, but actually bringing in a more experienced head has got to be a good thing for Chelsea as well, surely, Anton? Look, I mean, it's interesting what the Chelsea project is going to be, because we all know they're, they're trusting in youth. Yeah, and they've got so many sort of exciting players, either you know, playing out there like the likes of you know, Callum hudson is back, Ruben Loftus cheeks can be back soon, which I think would be fantastic for them as well. But you do need experience, and the fact of the matter is, you know, that's Frank Lampard has got one frustration at the moment, and that is at the, at, up front, and he feels that's where he needs experience. Now, a lot of Chelsea fans say, actually, we quite like some experience at the back as well, but the manager wants it at the other end of the pitch. Yeah, and we've kind of already alluded to the frustration. I mean, all this talk about Chelsea and their transfer ban, it then gets lifted, and then they don't actually sign anyone. Do you think that it, it is frustrating for them? Did it surprise you, JD, that I, this I is kind of the first a, potential signing? I think because of the extent of obviously trying to remove or restrict that sort of that embargo, the length of it, you would think that you would actively want to be, especially active in this market more than anything yeah. else. But I, again, it's bringing in the right players because they are going for sort of a, a redevelopment in terms of the philosophy, trying to bring through youngsters. You've seen that with Mason Mount come this year. Tammy Abraham's been fantastic as well. You can understand the philosophy, but at the same time, you are right. If you want to win competitions, and Chelsea are a massive club across the whole of Europe, so they want to win competitions, they are going to need experience. Now, I do agree with you for one instant. Value for money, Merton's unbelievable. But at the same time, is he going to turn around and improve that team right now? Is he going to turn around and come in and get you, let's say, 15 goals? <laughs> no, no, I agree, but, but if, if there's no point signing him if they don't believe he's, he's not going to do, if he's going to do that. Sign them, Masavia. Yeah. Well, Chelsea fans, <laughs> let us know what you think. We're really interested to know your thoughts on Dries Mertens and that potential move. Use that hashtag transfer talk. But let's check in with the state of play and Emma. Yes, Barcelona have seen a shock. £85 million offer for Everton's Richarlison turned down. Barca are now considering a £20 million bid for Chelsea. We have Willian, who is out of contract at the end of the season. Newcastle have agreed a loan deal with Tottenham for Danny Rose. And Tottenham's striker search continues with Chelsea's Olivier Giroud open to a move across London. Arsenal have signed Spanish centre-back Pablo Marie on loan from Brazilian champions Flamengo until the end of the season with the option to buy. Burnley are close to agreeing a deal to sign Bristol City's Josh Brownhill. And finally, Brighton are interested in Chelsea right-back Tarek Lamptey. Now, Manchester United fans, you finally have your player. Well, almost. United have confirmed they've reached an agreement to sign Sporting Lisbon midfielder Bruno, Fer Bruno Fernandes. It is a deal worth up to £68 million, subject to a medical and the agreement of personal terms. Uh, the Portugal international flew into Manchester yesterday. We saw the pictures of that to complete the move. So we do await the official confirmation. Uh, pretty much the most drawn-out transfer of this window. And I mean, don't forget, we were talking about him in the summer as well. Uh, Anton, is he a player that is worth the wait? <laughs> sure, Matthew, no pressure. Oh, pressure. But, um, yeah, look, I mean, he's definitely what Manchester United... He's the kind of player Manchester United need. And they're getting a player that can kind of do everything. Let's be brutally honest. He'll be asked to play kind of behind the front three. But, yeah, he's, he's, he's a goal scorer. He's a creator. More importantly, he's a leader. He's the captain of sporting, a struggling sporting side. He's the talisman of that side. 
Manchester United don't just need creativity. They don't just need an outlet. They, you know, last night's game against Manchester City, a great example. They only had two shots on target for the entire game. A game where they needed to come from behind and score goals. Yeah. You know, they, and granted, they're playing Manchester City. But still, that, so yes, they need creativity. But they just need hope. They need something to feel good about Manchester United as well. The fans need something to get behind. So, yes, it's been drawn out. Yes, could, the, could this have been done quicker? Should it have been done quicker? Obviously. But st for me, this just makes sense. It's a no-brainer, this deal. I, I yeah. do agree with you. I think from a, from a fan's perspective especially, you can see recently it's, it's got quite toxic. And Manchester United fans have never really, ever really historically been toxic, towards, especially towards their own club. So I think for a morale sort of boosting impact, this, this is a, an important move. It's, it's a, it would be probably the deal of the summer, I mean, deal of the window so far. But at the same time, it's just the impact they have in terms of boosting the whole morale in the actual club itself. Yeah, and I mean, United fans, they do sound happy on social media. They've kind of been going on about it. We want to get this deal done, but they do still want more as well. Uh, so I guess the question is, will they sign a striker before tomorrow's deadline? Well, here's what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had to say after last night's match with Manchester City. We need more goals. I know if we get Bruno over the line, we've got a boy there who's going to score and create. I need someone who wants to break their nose to score a goal or the toe. Uh, it doesn't have to be the nice ones. Let's talk on Friday. And actually, as we speak, Dave and Alex have both been in touch on Twitter, uh, both actually saying, why would Manchester United not go for Dries Mertens? We've just been talking about him and that potential move to Chelsea. Uh, Dave backing up Alex saying, could Manchester United potentially hijack the Mertens deal? Thinks that he would be a good fit. Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, though, saying that Bruno Fernandes, <laughs> he will come into this side, he'll give them goals, he will create. But, I mean, fair to say he needs someone to create those goals for. Uh, time running out, they took their time with that Fernandez deal. Do you expect United to be announcing the signing of a striker before tomorrow? R really interesting quotes from Solskjaer yesterday. I want a striker who wants to break his nose to score a goal. Is that a dig at strikers he's moved on or whatever? But is that a kind of out and out striker, big, six foot tall? Good in the air. I mean, really interesting comments from Oli. I was, I was really enjoyed listening to him post. I actually feel like actually. that's potentially more of a dig at Anthony Martial. I think that's what a lot of fans thought on Twitter. Now, Martial is someone who can be unplayable mm. on his day, but mm. there are times like last night where you know he went a little bit missing um, and he's just inconsistent. And then you're relying on Mason Greenwood uh, to then come up with these goals. And you know, it's unfair on a teenager can't be relied upon solely to win games and we found out two weeks ago that Marcus Rashford was out injured for a while. Manchester United probably knew more than two weeks ago. It is now one day to go until the deadline and they still don't have a striker in at the moment. There's, there's, there's no sympathy anyway because in the summer when we were talking about this it's all well and good moving Romelu Lukaku on and Alexis Sanchez but there was no replacements. Now we're talking about the likes of Olivier Giroud. Would he be the kind of player Man United would look at for a few months? I just, I just think <laughs> as well it kind of just shows the times of Man United. I mean, I've especially seen the reports that they, they want to maybe give Alexis Sanchez a, a chance to revive his career at Manchester United. The, you don't leave and go to Inter Milan on a loan deal after having a disappointing campaign, probably for his own standards, and in turn, man, to be given another opportunity at Manchester United. Those sort of things don't happen for a club of that elite stature and historically in Man United's tenure. It just doesn't happen. They move on and they turn around and find themselves the next person that wants to represent that shirt. And I just think right now, they haven't got enough players that are have that sort of Man United DNA, as they turn man and call them. Those players that, as you turn man and say, want to break their nose to score a goal. How many players in that Man United shirt can turn man and say they honestly want to do that week in, week out at this moment in time? Yeah, it's certainly going to be really interesting to see what pans out over the next day uh, to see if they do bring in a another striker. We're going to head out onto the road now. We're going to head to Sheffield. Uh, it could be a busy few days for Sheffield United and Chris Wilder. Tim Thornton is at the club's training ground for us this morning. And Tim, lots of Sheffield United fans wanting to know if they're going to be bringing in a new face. It's something we love about the transfer window and getting to know new players is how to pronounce their names. Uh, Sander Berg, we understand it is, not Sander Burge. You can confirm that things for us but does this one look like it's going to be done pretty soon yeah Sander Berger I think it is but that might get corrected later but yeah it is very very close that the, the significant news is that the player is in Sheffield there have been pictures actually on social media this morning of him with the Sheffield United boss Chris Wilder negotiations have been ongoing for a few days on this it's been a difficult deal to get done He's a highly sought-after player, Champions League experience, Europa League experience. He's a player that Sheffield United have been tracking uh, since the summer. 
and he's not going to come cheap either. It will be a club record deal. And I know Chris Wilder is very, very keen to get this done, but it's a real statement of intent as far as uh, Sheffield United are concerned because he is one of the most sought-after young midfielders in Europe. He comes with a real pedigree, and if he can get this one done today, then I think Chris Wilder will be a very, very happy man. And Tim, what about a new striker? Uh, this might be another one you can help me out with the name with. Could Richairo Zivkovic uh, be joining before the deadline? Yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, we expect that deal to get done as well. He was in Sheffield uh, yesterday. The key to this one is that Chris Wilder has been looking to add a little bit of pace to his uh, uh, attack. He does have Lise Mousse. He runs in behind, he stretches defences, but uh, they don't really have a change for that, so it's an option perhaps from the bench or if Mousse is not fit. Callum Robinson has been allowed to go out on loan to West Brom, so they're hoping to get this one done as well. Again, this has been a little bit complicated because he plays over in China, so negotiations have been ongoing with his uh, Chinese club. This one could be a loan deal, but we're expecting more details when we speak, speak to Chris Wilder at 10 o'clock this morning. Tim, we'll look forward to hearing what he's got to say. Thank you very much for now. Zivkovic, a very common name in Scotland, by the way. Uh, right, stay with us. So <laughs> much more to come on Good Morning Transfers. Big developments last night involving Barcelona and Richarlison. Hi there, welcome back to Good Morning Transfers. We're going to start this part with a little bit of breaking transfer news and it concerns Josh Brownhill, the Bristol City captain. He is at Burnley undergoing a medical ahead of his move. Uh, it's understood the fee is worth around £10 million for the midfielder. Uh, so yeah, currently undergoing his medical ahead of a move from Bristol City to Burnley. Remember, we told you that news at the top of the show that Bristol City have agreed a deal worth just under £4 million to sign Naki Wells the other way from Burnley. Uh, so the two may well be linked but as soon as we have confirmation of those, we will bring them to you. Elsewhere, uh, Real Sociedad striker William Josie was left out of the 18-man squad for their match against Osasuna last night. Despite being included a day earlier, it's a name that you'll have become familiar with because we've been talking about him lot, uh, a lot in terms of interest from Tottenham this month. Uh, Michael, uh, we know that the North London club, you know, they held talks with Sociedad about William Josie. Do you expect to see him in a Spurs shirt? Is this the biggest clue yet that he's going to be leaving? We don't know. I, I'm going to be honest. With you. We, we don't know at the moment because Christoph, Christoph Piontek seemed to be the first choice, but he's now going to Hertha Berlin. There were shots last night of him arriving in Berlin, so that that would be a bit of a blow. But you know, maybe couldn't get negotiations. Is it obligation option to buy a loan to start? But Hertha Berlin have come in with a, a bit of around 23 and a half million pounds. So Tottenham will be looking elsewhere. Look, they need a striker. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's always Spurs always do saying on the final day. I'm sure my colleague Paul Gilmore will be very busy down there. <laughs> um, but yeah, and of course, the, you know, yesterday I was talking about interesting Olivier Giroud. I mean, I don't know how if that will develop. But yeah, interesting when players are left out of squad. Yeah. Sometimes it's players say, "Look, I'm not fully focused." Um, Could it be he's trying to push the move through as well? Maybe, I guess? maybe. That I mean, we, we haven't we haven't heard from yeah. him, but obviously he he, he is one one player they they were looking at. And as I say. I think Tottenham do need a striker, it's pretty obvious, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Anton, we're just going to break away from Tottenham now because we love it when there's one day to go. Lots of things happening. Christmas so, Eve. Yeah, it is. Breaking news from Wolves to bring us. Yeah, yeah. their potential new signing, Daniel Pudence, he's in Wolverhampton, had a medical yesterday, and I expect that deal, around £16.9 million, to be confirmed later today. Uh, Daniel Pudence has taken to Instagram to say thank you and goodbye to yeah. Olympiakos, basically, which is kind of... Makes my job easier because it's definitely going to be confirmed now, isn't it? If you need a clue, yeah. so, that's a pretty big long clue. statement. <laughs> that, yeah. um, look, he, he thanks the fans. Of, he, like, he says thank you for, for the passion for the, for the derbies. He's, uh, he's struggling for the for words to express how he feels about his last year and a half in Greece. So look, that's a sign that he's probably sent that from his hotel room in Wolverhampton, isn't he? So he's he's on his way <laughs> to Wolves. He'll be at the training ground later, and that deal will get done. Like I said, uh, the third third highest sign in the Wolves uh, history. Hi. Daniel Pudence joining for just under £17 million. Pounds. Excellent stuff, Anton, thank you. Um, now, how about this? Could Richarlison be in line for a shock exit from Everton? Everton have turned down an offer of €100 million, Euros. that's around £85 million, pounds from Barcelona. Emma, mm. explain what has happened mm. here. Yeah, well, like you said, they've turned down uh, that massive, massive bid. It was an offer that was made earlier this week, and Everton rejected the offer immediately. Obviously, they don't want to let go of one of their prized assets, do they? Uh, Barcelona looking for a 
a striker. We know Luis Suarez is out for months now with that knee injury. He's had surgery on his knee. Um, and what we also know is that Barca did make an inquiry for Richarlison last summer as well, but they were knocked back. He is a sort of long-standing target of Eric Abidal, Barca's sporting director. So it's interesting to see how this one plays out. But Everton, of course, don't want to let him go, do they? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of money, as you said, 100 million euros, 85 million pounds. But, Michael, can you see why Everton have rejected this? Absolutely. I mean, they've just got Carlo Ancelotti, one of the greatest <laughs> names one of the biggest managers in world football, most well-known names in world football. Everton fans absolutely delighted about mm -hmm. it, so excited. They've had one little blemish, was the performance against Liverpool in the FA Cup, but there's huge excitement there. You know, they've got a new stadium they're about to build, and Ancelotti, look, he's looking at the squad. They will have to make changes in the summer. He, I think he's assessing the squad now. Don't look like they're going to go down. They're probably not going to finish in the top six. He's assessing all the players at the moment, probably starting on zero. But there's one player they know for certain that he wants to build the team around, and that's Richarlison. He, he came for a fair fee as well from Watford yes. at the time. Let's not forget that. So, I'd be, I would have been surprised, even the fee, I'd have been surprised that under an Ancelotti Everton that they'd consider it. Yeah, and he's 22 years old. Mm. That's what people Which, forget. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what people sometimes yeah. forget. And. Because we've known about him for a couple of years, we've seen the in and out sort of impact, inconsistent sometimes, mm -hmm. but how special he can be on his day. We sometimes forget he's only 22 years old. Now, mm -hmm. this is not me trying to talk him out of a move away from Everton, because I think 22 is a, Everton is a very, very good place to be at. It's going in the right sort of direction. But it doesn't surprise me at all, the interest, because watching him last year when we had, I covered the Brazil training camp when they came into the UK and there was, uh, had friendlies against Uruguay and Cameroon here in the UK, and it was just, it was incredible to watch how good he was up close, the small nuances he does, how much of a physical presence he is and how adaptable he is between all three positions. I didn't realise, watching me even week, week in, week out of Everton, I didn't realise how good of a player he was until he was in that Brazil setup. And what I also found was how well and how, how liked he is within the Brazil media. Like, they only talk about certain players in a certain way because of naturally they have stars. They have always historically had stars. And Richarlison is being built up as another huge star that is coming out of Brazil. Yeah. That close relationship that he has with Neymar, I was able to see close up and personal. And that is a player who only accustoms himself, even though he's the leader, with certain people. So I'm telling you now, that close relationship and how he is as a player, his trajectory, this interest doesn't surprise me whatsoever. I think it's interesting you were saying about the kind of introduction of Carlo Ancelotti at Everton, because I think a lot of Everton fan fans thought that once Marco Silva left, maybe Richarlison's form would dip a bit, like it did at Watford. Um, you know, Richarlison's spoken a number of times about how Marco Silva was like a father to him, and he actually went to Brazil to bring him to Watford in the first place. But I think the key thing, like you said, he's 22 years old. Um, we were talking about £80 million pounds for Zaha in the summer. He's 27, he's, he's five years older. And um, I think the key thing as well is Everton could not replace him at this point. There yeah. is, it's a day before the deadline. Yeah, and actually we can look at some of his stats just to kind of show how good he is and how key he is to this Everton side. This is him oh. uh, compared to other Everton forwards this season. And I mean, look at that. He ranks first in, in every single category, apart from goals second, but he's still got eight goals. But yeah, I mean, that, that really does just show how key he is to this side. Yeah, completely. And the fact is that they've got yeah, they've kind of stumbled across a goal scorer in Dominic Calvert-Lewin as well, which means Richarlison can play his game. Mm -hmm. He isn't doesn't necessarily have to play as a centre forward. He can come in from wherever he wants, usually on the left, and he can develop in a way that he wants to. The way that Marco Silva kind of tried to do it at Watford, I think you're right how important that was. But Carlo Ancelotti will, is definitely a great guy to develop mm. to develop Richarlison. The one thing that, about this that kind of leaves me scratching my head though is is the Barca side. It's, where's the money come from? <laughs> it's like, true. The, the, the it's beginning true, right? of the window, we were told that they needed to sell players in order to you know, balance the books, especially with you know, FFP regulations and that kind of thing. So you know, you're looking at the likes of Arturo Vidal potentially being out the door, Ivan Rakitic potentially being out the door. They're both still there. Mm. And then all of a sudden, Luis Suarez gets, gets a knock and they don't have the players, or they, even though they've got Griezmann and Ansu Fati's coming in, these kind of, and they've still got Usman Dembele, remember him? Yeah. 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 And yet all of a sudden they're just like, ah, let's just splash out 85 minutes, try and spend it. What? Wow! How do you do that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's Ronaldo money. You're that's, Barcelona, you, know. you can do what you like. So yeah. it's, it, no, it is it's, a really it's, interesting perspective, though, on things, because it is, you know, they're saying they need someone, but can they actually physically afford to well, bring if, someone if, in? Well, if they bring in, if they make a big signing now, there will be even more departures in the summer as, as, as a result. Oh, yeah. There will be big names leaving Barcelona as a result if they bring someone in now. But the fact of the matter is, I think Barcelona may well, yeah, they tried Rodrigo, mm. they tried Richarlison. I think they're going to come up short. 
they're going to have to rely on the squad they've got, like most other clubs have to. Welcome to the real world, Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's one to keep an eye on, certainly. Uh, lots of you getting in touch this morning. We started the show by talking about Dries Mertens. Uh, Sammy's got in touch. He says, Mertens would have been a better signing for Chelsea a few years ago. Uh, we do not want someone who's going to play for a season and then hardly notice him <laughs> again. Uh, someone for the long haul, ideally. Uh, Zuber says, Dries Mertens is the answer to our finishing problems uh, for the next couple of months so that our top four ambitions are met. So he's certainly looking <laughs> in the short term. Uh, and Ben says, Mertens could be great playing alongside Tammy. That's just what we need could play out wide or just behind him could be a good short term deal and at five million pounds the risk is pretty minimal keep using that hashtag transfer talk have your say get in touch so much to come we'll be speaking live to kenny miller who's now a free agent and we've also got news from the efl Kenny Miller, a proven goal scorer now, a free agent after leaving Partick Thistle a week ago. And I'm very pleased to say that Kenny joins us live now on Good Morning Transfers alongside Luke Shanley. A very good morning to you both. Good morning, Joe. Yes, and this is a striker that scored in four different decades, the 90s, the noughties, the 10s and the 20s just a few weeks ago against Dundee United, the runaway leaders of the championship. Kenny, great to see you. You're now a free agent. What's next for a 40-year-old striker? Who knows? It's, uh, obviously, playing options are always going to be limited by the, the stage of my career that I'm at. So, so, yeah, I'm looking at a few other things at the moment. Uh, a few things have been documented that I've, I've kind of potentially got an opportunity to still play. But, again, there's other options in the, in the coach in front as well. So, I'm kind of just mulling everything over at the moment. And, uh, like I said, the options, playing options are always going to be limited at, at this stage of my career. So, yeah, but still exciting. Always looking forward to the next chapter as well. When we were interviewing you when you were at Rangers in your late 30s, everyone was saying, how long can you keep going? And you always said you wanted to play until you are 40. You've managed to do that. Do you see that future carrying on? I know you've had a taste of management with Livingston. Listen, I, I'm, I'm not ready to retire. Obviously, last week, uh, leaving part at Thistle was a little bit out of the blue. Things have moved pretty quickly. Uh, so I still feel physically able. You know, I've, I've, I've actually been really quite diligent with checking numbers and data, all the physical data you get these days with, with the sports scientists and things so my numbers are good, you know, so I, I know physically I'm able, but uh, like I said, I think when you get to this age it's uh, you're always looking towards the next step rather than the playing step, but to think of playing your last game or scoring your last goal as I did against Dundee United a few weeks back it's uh, it's quite a scary thing to think that you're going to, you're going to hang them up, so you never know, football's a funny old game and the next few days could throw up a few things, but like I said, there's a, there's a few decisions to make in, in regards to whether they play or, or whether they hang. What level could you still play at, do you feel? You know, again, I'm, I'm, I still feel I could play at a higher level than what I have been this season, to be honest with you, but that's for other people to decide, you know. I mean, like I said, I still feel physically able, I feel the quality that I could bring, not just on the field, but off the field for a team as well. I think with the experience that I've gained over the number of years, it would still be or still have a valuable part to play in any regime, you know, so it's one of the things. But as I say, I've got a few exciting things on in the pipeline that I've got to decide over in the next few days, so it's uh, it could be on to the next step and, and hanging them up eventually. Well, Stephen Gerrard says he's in the market for a striker after Jermaine Defoe got injured. We're here at Ibrox. <laughs> Keep it a, a fourth spell, maybe, at Rangers? No, that, that's, uh, that, that's a million <laughs> one shot, I would say, Luke, but I, I think they'll be looking at I me. Mean, you know... What happened last night with Jermaine Defoe, I think there's, there's no doubt even before that I think Rangers could have done with a third option. With a, I think there were only an injury or a suspension like they have been in the last three or four games away from only having that one option up front. So I'm sure they'll be definitely in the market, whether that's a striker domestically. I know Lauren Shanklin's with a lot of speculation uh, uh, surrounding him and, and, and whether he's going to be on the move, which there has been for the last 18 months, two years, with a, the with a level of goal the boy's been scoring. So uh, domestically, I think he, he's one that could 
could potentially be up out there for a few teams. Celtic have been linked as well, obviously. Uh, that's why Rangers have got scouting teams, uh, the crew, the networks, so I'm sure if Alfredo Morelos, again, has been linked with moves as well, that you've always got a backup, you've always got options if someone moves on. So what happened last night to Jermaine Defoe, there's no doubt I'm sure Rangers between now and, and tomorrow night will be looking to bring one in. Yeah, a lot of talk about Alfredo Morelos as well with the incident that happened the other night ago that's been investigated. How tough is it, because Stephen Gerrard said to me after the game, that players in this city, regardless of who you play for, these incidents shouldn't be happening. You've played for both sides of the divide in terms of Rangers and Celtic. How tough is the pressure dealing with, with playing in Glasgow? You know, you're under scrutiny every single day, you know, whether it's training, games, walking down the, the street in Glasgow, out for dinner with your family, you know, you're always... It's, it's just the nature of the beast, you know. What you've got is, when you have players that have been through it, when you look at the range at the moment, you've got Stephen Gerrard, Ed, you've got Alan McGregor and Stephen Davis, who have loved it, you know. So these guys will be used to it, but for other lads that are not quite used to it, it can be quite daunting, you know. And Alfredo's always been someone who's who's been right at the forefront, of whether it be media uh, coverage or, or incidents with fans or, or, or opponents. Uh, I mean, you have to. It's, it's, it's part and parcel, you know. I mean, I think you've got to try and find a way. Ignore the noise when when people are talking in terms of medias and outlets and things. But in terms of the fans, I think you try. You've just got to try and enjoy it and thrive on it, you know. It's uh, if you do that, I think you can have a real successful time. And Alfredo's been great since he came to the club. He's scoring a lot of goals. Again, all kinds of speculation surrounding him in, in regards to transfers. And you never know; he could be somebody that's, that's subject to a few bids uh, tomorrow as well. So at the moment, I just don't see Rangers can afford to let him go. Uh, so long may continue to keep playing and scoring goals and, and, and doing what he does best. Back to the transfers then. At 40, it's fair to say you've had a, a few clubs. Tell us about your memories of deadline day, any moves that you recall? Well, I moved, I've moved, I think I moved once on deadline day. I've moved a couple of times close to deadlines, but once on, on deadline day down to Derby. Uh, put this way, I'm sure every single football player in Britain at the moment, if not Europe, will be sitting next to their phone over the next uh, 48 hours, 24 hours, because you just never know, football can throw up funny things. And at this stage of the season, transfer deadline day, day before transfer deadline day, teams need to sign players, teams that are in the market for certain positions, things just go carnage, you know, at this time of year, so panic buying, all this kind of stuff, so it's, it's important that, that teams sign players, I mean, the fans demand it, uh, and again, only where we are, it's going to demand to probably go and find someone to, to be that backup to Alfredo Morello, so I'm sure every player sitting by their phone over the next 24 hours, 36 hours, uh, hoping for a bid, hoping for a move, or some things can get out of the they come out of the woodwork that I'm not even expected. So yeah, players will definitely be diligent over the next uh, over the next 36 hours. Was it difficult for you on deadline day to move? Was it nervous, or was it a case of just trying to push it through? No, it is. It is very nerve wracking. And again, because th there's no time to make the decision. You know, see if you've got a, a summer to mull things over, and you've got uh, like even in mass situations, when I've got all the time in the world, I can sit back and assess all the options and and make an informed decision, a decision that you speak with your friends and family. Whereas sometimes it, you, you could have an hour or two max to make a decision. So. You have to make that decision, you have to make it quickly and you've got to hope it's the right one because sometimes you've not got the time and the and the benefits of having time to kind of talk it through and think everything through. So, But it's, uh, listen, that's why we love transfer deadline day. Kenny, great to see you. Thank you very much for your time. There we go. If anybody needs a, a striker, a 40-year-old striker, a very experienced former international, Kenny is going for free. Get phoning him now. <laughs> great stuff, Luke. Thank you so much. Let's take a look at what's happening around the EFL now, shall we? And Wigan, well, they want Colchester fullback Cohen Bramall. That's in case left back Anton Robinson is sold to AC Milan or Lyon. Cardiff's Omar Bogle could be the latest player to join the Alan Pardew revolution at Ardo Dane Haag. The striker could join Jordan Spence, George Thomas, and Sam Stubbs' January signings at the Dutch Strugglers. Marcus Madison, now he looks set for a late move from Peterborough to the Championship. Posh chairman Darren McAnthony was a guest on the transfer show last night and admits a deal relies on the buying club letting a couple of players leave first. And Bradford City, well they've made an offer for Sunderland's Will Grigg. James Vaughan though has left Bradford for Tranmere. Anton, thank you very much for now. Uh, we are going to bring you some pictures now here because uh, we heard from Tim Thornton in his live earlier uh, that there were some images of Sander Berger meeting Chris Wilder and 
we can bring those to you. Now, here they are. These are from a Dutch media news agency. Uh, of course, Sheffield United close to completing the signing of Berger from Genk. Here he is. He's arrived at Sheffield United to finalise that move. It would be a club record fee, but that is the player there with Chris Wilder. So that move looking like it is imminent. And yeah, a couple of Sheffield United fans getting in touch. This one here from James uh, using that hashtag transfer talk. He says, Sander Berger to Sheffield United is an absolute masterclass from the club. This kid is quality <laughs> and shows just how far United have come and just where we are going. He ends by saying he is next level. Uh, and Michael, you agree with those sentiments from James? It's like Sheffield United are playing snakes and ladders and they've just gone right up. It is an incredible signing if this comes off. He is a top-class <laughs> player. And what I like about Sheffield United, Bookie's favourites to go down, they're eighth, looking really comfortable on 33 points. They're not settling it. They're, go they're trying to go the next level already. Chris Wilder's not saying, look, we're fine this January. He has gone in and got a real top-class player there if yes. it comes off. They're a point behind Manchester United, a point behind Tottenham Hotspur, point behind Wolves. I look to be wearing Wolves stuff today. But, you know, <laughs> they could actually make the Europa League the way they're going. What a huge boost. Do you know what I love about this as well? It's opportunism. There's absolutely no way Sheffield United went into this window planning to spend that much on a holding midfielder. But they've oh. seen, as Michael was saying, you know, a great a player with great potential and experience for his age available. And they've just gone, right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's push for Europe. Yeah. And if this guy's going to get us over the edge, then it's an absolute snip because being in Europe, they'll get that money back straight away. And also, yeah. just think about the budget. They've adjusted and they've done so well in looking at the summer budget and looking how much they spent there, working with the squad that they have, developing into that system. And now they have the finances to turn around and say, we can push on even further for the second half of the season. So the way that Wilder has just adjusted this, has done this whole season, has just been fantastic from both on the field and off the field as well. Yeah, as Sheffield United fans, let us know uh, what you think. And of course, we will keep across that one and let you know as soon as we have any confirmation. Uh, just a line to bring you from Tottenham. Uh, defender Cameron Carter-Vickers has joined Luton. Uh, it is a loan until the end of the season. He did spend the first half of the season on loan at Stoke. He's now going out on loan to Luton. Uh, right, don't forget, download the latest episode of the Transfer Talk podcast. It's available on iTunes and Spreaker as well as on the Sky Sports News website. Uh, coming up next in Good Morning Transfers, Danny Rose is on his way out of Tottenham, we'll discuss his move next. Hi there, this is Good Morning Transfers. Uh, we were discussing Richarlison a little earlier, who's a target for Barcelona. Well, Barcelona, they're also preparing a last-minute £20 million bid for Chelsea winger Willian, who's, of course, out of contract in the summer. And, Emma, how happy do you think Chelsea would be to let Willian go? I don't think they'd want to let him go. I think uh, he's a player for me. I he seems to get quite a bit of stick from fans, especially over recent years, which I've never really understood. I think ahead of this season, a lot of people thought that, um, you know, you had wingers coming through the likes of Callum Hudson-Odoi, Christian Pulisic, so you kind of thought maybe his playing time would be limited. But you look at the managers that Chelsea have had in the time he's been at the club, Mourinho, Hidding, Conte, Sarri, Lampard. He continues to get playing time. He continues to be in the matchday squads. And this season, more than ever as well, he's one of the senior heads, one of the wise figures at the club along with, you know, uh, Aspinacueta, Marcus Alonso. So he's needed more than ever at this time, I think. Yeah, and, and I guess, does that make him desirable then? So, Anton, you can see why Barcelona are targeting him. I can completely see why, and he's another long-term target of Barcelona. But, so, we are a little, you know, behind the curtain. We had in our production meeting this morning, my initial thought was, well, 20 million for a player that's out of contract in the summer. Kind of, you know, a bit of a no-brainer, really, post-30. And I was, you know, watched Chelsea quite a lot this season. I thought, well, he hasn't had the same impact. He's not the same player he once was. I thought, right, he needs statistical evidence because JD was giving me some in the meeting <laughs> Take as well. Take it back. <laughs> enough. Went through, went through his stats, and you look at look at how well he's played this season. They're as good as they ever have been at Chelsea. Thank you. Very you know, much. His, his mm. goals per game is is up. His his shots per game is up. His key passes per game is at the same level. His dribbles per game. Look at this. He's still still assisting. He's still you know get uh, minutes per goal. Okay, that's down a little bit, but that's from. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely fun. He's still contributing. He's he, his passes per game is up, so he's just modified his role slightly under a different manager. He's still really <laughs> important to Chelsea. So we were talking about the experience that Frank Lampard wants in his team to blend with the youth. I think I might have got it wrong. Yeah. I think I think it's it actually. Got it wrong. It, oh no, I'm sorry. Wait, can we just take this in for a second? Did, you, did we just say that again? Sorry, say that again. I just want to hear it you one more time. You could be a good winner, JD. Just just for once, I just want to hear it. I just want to hear it. I look, mate. I've already said it once. So I'll say it again. 
I was I was wrong. They should keep William because he's integral <laughs> to, to, to Chelsea in the way they played this season. It I'm wasn't done. just one game at Tottenham where he played well. I'm done. So, JD, you think he should stay at Chelsea? I mean, you don't get any better intention of sort of how William is valued in that team than what, by what the manager says. And the manager's made it very clear at the beginning of this window. He insisted that he didn't want Ross Barkley to go anywhere and he didn't want William to go anywhere. He's come on the record and said that. Now, if, as you turn man and said, numerous managers have come in the door in Chelsea's while during William's tenure, and yet every single one of them have played them consistently. Every single one of them has seen his value. That shows the quality of the player. Now, statistically, he might not jump out to you because he's in an attacking position, and you think to yourself, well, he should score more, and he should bring more assists. But at the same time, it's the impact that he has on the game in the important times, and that is understated. And ask any Chelsea fan, they'll tell you straight, he is a critical, critical player for how they look in an attacking sense. We talk about 20 million, but if Chelsea lose Willian for 20 million and they drop out the top four, that's a lot more than 20 million pounds. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, we're going to talk about Danny Rose now because he's agreed to join Newcastle on loan until the end of the season. <laughs> he could actually be in line to make his Newcastle debut against Norwich this weekend. Michael, were you surprised by this news, this switch that he's going to make? No. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know. A few, a few months ago, Danny said in, a, in an article that, that, that they'd be wasting their time if anyone came in for him this January. But that was under a different regime. That was under Maurizio Pochettino, who he considered his, a father, a second father to him. He, he had a great few years under Poch. Um, he, there's no fallout of Jose Mourinho, but he's got um, Ben Davis, who's coming back. Jan Vertonghen can play there. Tanganga can play there. Ryan Sessegnon can play there. He's got the Euros to come as well. So for me, it's a good fit. And there are other clubs after him, but Newcastle, he, wants to, he wants to play for Newcastle. And I guess from the Newcastle perspective, it is a really good move, Anton, because they clearly need reinforcements. Oh, they really do. You, losing Yetro Willems for the season, I think, is massive. He's been a huge bonus for Newcastle this season. You know, came in on loan and just has made a great impact down the left. And that left side has been, you know, they've had Sam Maximin and Almiron further forward, and the attacking down the left has been one of their main strengths. But also Danny Rose. Danny Rose just needs to feel a bit of love. And Steve Bruce will give him that. You know, he'll make him feel like the best left back in the, in the league, which is what Danny Rose probably believes he is. And that's what Gareth Southgate wants to see ahead of the Euros. So, it, again, it's one of those moves where you're just like, it's good for the player to get a fresh start. It's good for England, potentially, to see Danny Rose playing every week. And it's great for Newcastle. Yeah, it's one of these ones that does seem to kind of make sense for all three players involved, the player and the two clubs. I mean, J.D., do you think he'll get the game time to prove himself ahead of the Euros then at Newcastle? 100%, especially at Newcastle right now. You spoke about Jethro Williams' sort of injury that has kind of changed their whole trajectory of that left-back position for this year. So he's definitely going to get the game time if that move is completed. But more importantly for Danny Rose, he's probably looking long-term. I mean, we've seen Ben Chilwell, whose form's kind of dropped off in the last couple of weeks, which has opened up that left-back position. Luke Shaw hasn't had sort of a, a long stretch throughout the season to turn around and say that he can consistently say, I'm England's left-back. Danny Rose would say, if I can put Sean for the final sort of moments of this season, I can maybe become the first choice left back again for the England team. Yeah, and Gareth Southgate's a huge fan of him as well. He always has been from the under 21 days. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned, Michael, that perhaps other clubs interested him as well. So do you think Newcastle is the obvious choice for him though? Or? He, had, he had a great loan spell at rival Sunderland, and <laughs> I was at the Sunderland Spurs game a few years ago, and Danny Rose stayed on the pitch and the entire stadium of light giving him a standing ovation. Now, that doesn't mean that Newcastle fans aren't going to take to him because he played for rival Sunderland. That was another era, that was a long time ago. If, if you give 110% for Newcastle United, they're going to love you. I think it's a good move for Newcastle and it really is a good move for Danny Rose. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, that is it for this morning for Good Morning Transfers. Uh, thank you for getting in touch using that hashtag transfer talk. Quite a few Manchester United fans still picking up on our top story there about Dries Merton <laughs> and actually just going I've on and on. Jed, Red Devil 73, James here all saying, why, are Mertens, why is Mertens uh, not going to Manchester United? Uh, right, just to let you know, the podcast is available for you. iTunes, Spreaker, as well as the Sky Sports website. Remember, Good Morning Transfers, it is back tomorrow morning for you at nine o'clock where it is, of course, deadline day. Can you believe it? Uh, but Transfer Talk, before that, it returns in a couple of hours. That is live from midday. We're going to be joined in the studio by Big Zoo. Stand by for that. And Dharma Chef and Kavi Solokol, they return with the Transfer Show. That is at 7 o'clock this evening. Stay with us next up on Sky Sports News with just a day left for clubs to make some last-minute deals. Can they all fill their wish list? Well, Danny Higginbottom joins Rob Watton on Transfer Centre next. <laughs> 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 <laughs>